Cross Point Church, how's everybody doing this morning? Everybody doing well? Yeah, well, Happy New Year to everybody. I tell you, it's just a, it's so exciting to be a, uh, moving into a new year, and it's so good to see you here this morning as we embrace a new year. Uh, it's good for those of you who are watching as well from home. I know a lot of people are still at home these days with the situation that we have with the resurgence of COVID and whatnot, but but we're here, we're gathered together, we're worshiping together, and we're thankful together. Amen? We're thankful for Jesus Christ in our life. If you're visiting with us today, we want to say to you, we're excited that you're here today. We're excited that you uh, made the effort to come and join us this morning. I've had the opportunity of meeting a few of you this morning, and that's always good. But, but I tell you, it, it's amazing what God is doing in this place, and, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to what He's going to continue to do in 2020. One. Well, this morning we are kicking off a new series that I believe is one of the most foundational series that we could look at, uh, especially as we begin to embark on a new year, but really for the entire Christian life. It's a very foundational uh, series because it focuses on a very uh, foundational component of the Christian life. Uh, in this series, we're going to be talking about unshakable faith unshakable faith, and we're talking about how that faith can carry us through life, life above the chaos. And I think all of us here this morning would, would acknowledge that, that 2020 has been a chaotic year. Whether it's been good for you or bad for you, it doesn't really matter. It, it's just been a chaotic year because so much has been going on and there's so much uncertainty and there's so much confusion about so many different things. And so uh, faith is something that we need to dig deep into and allow that to be a part of who we are as believers and followers of Christ. I believe that the passage of Scripture that we're going to be looking at this morning, uh, looking at today, is one of the most important passages that we could, we could look at all year, that we could uh, study all year. I believe it's that important. And so this morning, I want to pray for us, and then we're going to dive into God's Word together and see what God's Word uh, teaches us about who we are, about our identity, about our, uh, the, the, the fact that we are called to follow Christ Jesus. Uh, God's Word has a tremendous amount to say to us this morning, and I couldn't be more excited about it. So let's pray together, and then we're going to dive into the Word here this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this time together as we usher in a new year, 2021. But God, we're also thankful for the lessons that were taught in 2020. Father, for so many people in this world, 2020 has been a, a difficult year. It's certainly been a chaotic year, uh, not only for us here in our community, but for those in, that are living, Christians living all throughout uh, our nation and really around the world. Uh, Father, we are thankful for your presence in our life. We're thankful, God, that you uh, are faithful, which we have been singing about this morning. And we're thankful, Father, that, that we have the opportunity to just follow you wherever it is that you lead. God, we love you so much. We pray that you would uh, be with us now. Help us to set aside those distractions that exist in our life. And God, that we would be able to focus on your word and understand that what it is that you want to teach us this morning. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, go ahead and turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. We've got to go toward the back of the Bible here of the New Testament, and we're going to dive into this remarkable uh, book uh, that we have in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to look this morning at verses 1 through 3, and we're going to talk about this morning real faith. And I say real faith because I'm talking about that real, unshakable, biblical faith. The kind of faith that can only come from God. And so what we want to see here this morning is what exactly does the Word of God teach us about faith? And what we have to do is start off with these first few verses and allow the Word of God to teach us exactly what faith really is. If we're going to talk about it, we got to, we got to understand it. We got to, we got to know it. You know, there are so many people in the world today, Christians in this world today, that are living in a sense of, of confusion and uncertainty. There's, there's those that are living in a place uh, of hopelessness for some. And, and, and I'll tell you, God has done so much in our life that as Christians, we should not really be living in that sort of place. And that's what this this lesson is going to teach us. There should be a sense of excitement about the future. There should be a sense of, uh, of encouragement for what God's doing in our life. And, but we know that this year has brought uh, on so much heartache and, and just wreaked havoc in so many people's lives this past year that, that a lot of people are finding themselves in this place of uncertainty and hopelessness. Now, here's what's interesting about Hebrews. Uh, the author of Hebrews is writing to Hebrews, okay? He's writing to the Hebrews, and, and he's writing to them to basically say this, that, that we need to have faith and trust in the one who has saved us. You see, for the Hebrews, they were going through some difficult times in their life as well. Most of what they were facing was persecution in their life. They were facing this persecution in a huge way. But it had led to them being really confused about Christianity. It had led them to be really confused about what's happening in the world. They were trying their best to look to Jesus and, and keep their eyes on the author and the perfecter of their faith. But they were growing weary. They were growing tired. They were growing discouraged by life circumstances. And because of that, they were beginning to feel as though they just need to quit. They were beginning to feel as though they just need to walk away. They were beginning to feel as though they just uh, could not keep going like they were. And so by the time we get to the end of chapter 10, we begin to see why the author of Hebrews said what he said in chapter 11 of this great book. You see, this, this chapter 11 is dedicated to talking about faith. It's, it was one where the author, uh, the, the entire chapter is talking about this one issue. And, and we know this uh, Hebrews chapter 11, this chapter, is known as, as the faith chapter to many. Uh, it's known as the heroes of our faith chapter because it talks about so many people who live lives of faith. But it, it, is, it is very foundational part of God's word for us to understand everything that exists in this wonderful chapter. But at the end of chapter 10, we really begin to see why it was that the author of Hebrews was going to write Hebrews chapter 11. I want to show you this before we dive into chapter 11. So in chapter 10, verse 35, we see where the, the author writes these words. He says, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Verse 37, for yet a little while and the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith to preserve their souls. I tell you, I love this this passage of scripture because it is so challenging to us to think about what he is saying here 
uh, saying to Christians who are on this verge of sort of walking away, of giving up, of, uh, of just sort of trying something new. And, and so he says here, he says, he says, in other words, you have been given something, you have been given a gift, and it is the gift of faith. And he goes on to say, you shall live by this. He's talking to Christians because he says the righteous, meaning those who have been made righteous through Christ Jesus, the righteous shall live by faith and not shrink back from the circumstances that we face. And so I tell you, there, there's probably not a more powerful passage of Scripture to look at when we consider the circumstances around us being uh, not favorable to our lifestyle, when we think about the circumstances around us being not what we would hope for, when we think about the difficulties of all that we must face, we must be challenged and challenged by God's word to live by faith. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. By live by faith and not shrink back, not give up, but to stand firm despite the circumstances in our life. And so we look at this. And so what the the author is saying here, he's he's saying basically this, that whatever faith is, and we're going to look at that in just a moment, whatever faith is, and it's very important that we define that, but whatever faith is, it is supposed to be a way of life for every Christian who has been saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? Faith is foundational. Faith is is everything concerning the life of a Christian. It is the starting point of our life, and it is what carries us through life. And so we see here, as the author of Hebrews is writing chapter 10, he says, man, he says, you've got to get a hold of this. You've got to understand that Christians are to live by faith, not shrink back, not give up, not throw in the towel, not quit, but to keep going despite and to praise God for everything that's happening in your life. Everything. James talks about that as well. In fact, the scriptures just reek of this as we, as we study the word of God. We see that, that Christians are identified, their identity is in Christ Jesus, whom their faith is in. The scriptures are very clear that we are to keep our eyes on the author and the perfecter of our faith. And so here we prepare, we, we get ready to read what we need to read about faith. You see, faith is not a pull yourself up by your bootstraps, positive thinking. That's not what faith is. I know that there are times in our life where you have heard that phrase, and and I've even said it before, sometimes we need to do that, but that's not what faith is. Faith is not positive thinking, and faith is is not brainless, sentimental feelings either. It's not just something that, you know, well, I have faith in Christ Jesus. It's not some sort of emotional feeling that we have. Faith is something that is a gift from God, and it's something that we need to understand that it comes from God, and he gives us this that we may trust in God. And so as Christians, as believers, as followers of Christ, we don't face a new year with fear. We face a new year with courage because we have all the faith and trust in our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we do. And so here we have this passage that begins, and I believe that one of the things that we must do is try to answer two questions out of this text. The first question is this, what is real, unshakable, biblical faith. The scriptures uh, define that for us so we don't have to look far. And then the second question is, what role does faith play in our life? Now I think I'm ready to read Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1, 2, and 3. Read this with me if you will. So it says this, it says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, by faith, it, it, uh, by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that What is seen was not made of things that are 
visible. Now, like I've already mentioned here this morning, and I need to sort of reiterate, is that perhaps there is no component in the Christian life that is more important, more foundational than faith. In fact, it is so important that the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. In fact, next week, we're going to be looking at that one as well as we get to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. That's where you find that. But that's how important it is, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And according to the Bible, faith is a belief... It is a belief in the one true God, the one true Savior of our lives without really seeing him. And it's more complex than that. We're going to dive into it here this morning. But on a surface level, this is what we begin to understand. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, we're going to read that later as well. But it reveals that faith is a gift from God. That faith is a gift from God. It is not something that we can muster up. It is not something that we can conjure up on our own. It is not something that we can build into our life. It is not something that we can grab hold of and work on in our life. It is a gift from God. And so the scriptures are very clear that this is a gift from God. We'll talk more about that as well. So therefore, what we could say here is that faith is a God-given certainty that enables you to totally trust him and what he has given you. Now let me read that again to you. Faith is a God-given certainty that enables you, that enables you to totally trust him and what he has given you. You see, faith is not something we obtain from diligent study. We get to know God better. We get to understand him better. But faith is one of these things that we we got to realize that God gives us the faith to understand what his word teaches us. Faith is not uh, obtained by the pursuit of the spiritual. Faith is a gift from God. And I love what Kent Hughes, a pastor and a theologian, says about faith. He, He sort of identifies faith like this. He says, faith is a solid conviction Resting on God's words that make the future present and the invisible seen. He goes on to say, faith has at its core a massive sense of certainty. A massive sense of certainty. So many of us, including myself, have gone through 2020 feeling very uncertain about things. But that's not faith. And I stand here today to testify to you that I have struggled with faith. Just like many of you have struggled with faith in God. I've allowed at times in my life over the last year to allow fear to creep in, to allow uncertainty to creep in, to allow the courage that God has given me to continue forward to diminish. I've allowed that in my life. And we should not do that as believers. We we should understand that this tremendous gift that God has given us is, is given to us that we can continue to move forward despite the circumstances in our life with great faith or certainty of our future. And so we look at this and we begin to see that that the author is dealing with these Hebrews. He's helping these Hebrews to understand the need to be people of faith faith not to worry about the persecution now I can't imagine what they were going through but I can't imagine what we've gone through and at the same time we are people who have who are dealing with the same emotions that the Hebrews were dealing with and as we look at this we have to stand firm stand solidly on our belief and our faith in God So here's what we see as we look into the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we see really that faith is sort of made up of two components which are hugely important to us to understand. So here's the first one. Faith is a future assurance. Faith is a future assurance. Look at verse 1 with me. So it says here, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. When we use this phrase, 
uh, of things hoped for. We are typically talking about those things that lie before us, those things that we are hoping for, those things that we hope in, those things that lay before us. And what we see here is the author of Hebrews, he starts off talking about the assurance, the certainty. And this word assurance is one that you need to underline, you need to highlight, you need to go and look it up, you need to understand it because it is so important in our Christian faith. Now, faith is the assurance. Assurance can be defined as a solid certainty, a solid certainty. It is something that we are absolutely certain about. And so here he says, now faith is the assurance. It is the solid certainty of what he is about to speak into. And what is it that he's speaking into? He says, of the things hoped for, those future things. Things. You see, in the Old Testament, the men and women who belonged to God, their, their hope was in the promises of God. And there were many things that God promised the people of the Old Testament. And so they lived their life believing and having faith in these promises that God had made. You have Abraham who was promised what? He was promised a promised land and he was promised to be made a great nation. And so Abraham's faith was such that when he heard this from the Lord, he basically said, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? Send me on out. And he was obedient to follow God where God was leading. And ultimately, those promises were fulfilled. You have a man named Noah who was told that there was going to be judgment on the world and that he would have to build an ark. And so what did he do? He said, what are the measurements? Tell me how you want it built. What is, who's going on? You know, what's happening? And so he was faithful, not knowing anything but the promise that God had revealed to them. And they acted upon these promises. In the New Testament, we had the disciples who followed Jesus. And for so much of their life, they didn't understand why he was saying what he was saying. There were often times where they ask him, can you explain that? Because, you know, it, it was just sort of confusing. Jesus was bringing in this, this, uh, this gospel message and they were processing and they were trying to understand it. But they acted, they, they allowed their life to be guided by the very words of Christ because they believed every word that he said. So much so that when Jesus ascended into heaven and left them to carry on, that many of them were all all of them really were willing to die for their faith. That's how strongly they believed in what Jesus had told them. And so it's an assurance. It's a solid conviction. It's a solid certainty of those things we hope for. Faith is not wistful longing that somehow things might come to pass favorably in a chaotic world. That's not faith. Where we just sort of, you know, long for that. We, we hope that it will turn out that way. No, faith is believing. Faith is knowing. Faith is, is, is not just longing, but having the certainty that everything will be okay. Faith is not hope and an improbable outcome. Christians don't sit here and live their life thinking, well, I think it might turn out good for me, or, or I hope it might turn out good for me. I, I know what Jesus has said, and I somewhat believe that. That's not faith. That's not faith. And so we look in the Scriptures and we begin to realize that, that faith is something much more than that. Christian faith is the certainty. It is a certainty in what God has told us. It's a certainty. Here's an impact statement for you here this morning. Faith helps us live life above the chaos. And not at the mercy of this world. Faith. Real unshakable biblical faith. Helps us live above the chaos. And not at the mercy of this world. You know, one of the things I love about reading the scriptures, you see all these people that are just like you and I. They're, they're not really, well, they're a little different maybe, but they're, 
But they're, they're, they're people who live their life believing and trusting and having faith in God. One of those people that we see in the scripture and we come to realize that he is a man of faith is the Apostle Paul. In fact, he, he has contributed so many of the letters that we see in the scriptures as he writes these epistles. And as you read the writings of Paul, you begin to realize how important faith is and how important that it is that we understand what faith is, this assurance this solid certainty that we must have that God is who he says he is and God is doing and will do what he says he will do we have to believe that as believers and followers of Christ Jesus Paul knew this and that's why he said these words Uh, all of this is from Romans chapter 8 but I, I love this chapter of scripture but he says this he says for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that has been revealed to us Romans 8 18 he also said and we know that for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose and again when he said these words he says who who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And then he said this finally, he says in verse 37, he says, No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, for I am sure. I am assured that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now let me ask you a question here this morning. Does that sound like a man who is somewhat convinced that Jesus is who he says he is? Or does he sound like a man who stands firm in his faith of Christ Jesus. I can promise you that as you read this man's writings, you will get a really good understanding. And even those who testified about Paul and Acts, you will get a real good understanding that this man had a solid certainty of who Jesus was and what Jesus was going to do in his life. When he faced persecution, when he faced stoning, when he was left for dead, you know what? He still believed in Jesus. He still believed. He still trusted. He still had faith. He still believed in the promises of God. All of this stuff. It's the assurance. It's the assurance of the future. Future assurance. Here's what I know. I know that whatever awaits David Rogers in 2021, it's going to be okay. Whatever awaits me in 2021, it's going to be okay. That whatever comes my way, that God is still in control. How about you this morning? Amen? God is still in control. And we need to trust him and we need to believe in him. And we don't need to be taken back by the circumstances that we face. Jordan mentioned, he didn't, he didn't, him and Rebecca were talking about, they don't know if it's going to be any better. I don't either. But I can tell you this, if it comes to death, I will stand before my creator in heaven. I don't know what my life holds for me. I don't know what awaits the future, but the assurance that I have is in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ Jesus. Now here's the second thing that we see. Not only do we see this future assurance, but we see that faith is a visual assurance, a visual assurance. Now, this one is where it gets a little bit tricky, but I want you to hang in there with me for a moment because this is so important as well. As we continue to read verse one, it says this, it says, now faith is the assurance that is solid certainty. It is believing beyond every A bit of doubt that we may have. It is trusting. It is knowing. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Look at this. And the conviction. Some translations say the the, uh, certainty of things. What? Not seen. It is believing in that which we do not see. That's what this passage is saying. I have heard and you have heard the age-old argument that people have made, those who refuse to believe in God, 
where they say, Shh, I can't see him. So how do I know he's there? How many of you have heard that? You don't have to raise your hand, but we, we've all heard that sort of argument where people say, where's God? They say, show me Jesus and I'll believe in him. We, we hear the atheists say that. We see the, the non-believers. And the reality is they, they can't see him because they don't have the faith to see him. And so here as we look into this passage, we begin to realize that they fail to, what they fail to realize is that faith brings the invisible into focus for those who have been redeemed. Faith allows us to see that which is not seen. And so faith is a visual assurance. The natural man cannot see Jesus, but let me just tell you this, I see him every day. Let me tell you how I see him. I see him ministering to me. I see him ministering to my family. I see him ministering to our church. I see him ministering to our world. I see Jesus working in ways where only Jesus can transform lives the way lives are being transformed. I see God at work every day of my life. You may say, well, show him to me. Well, I can show him to you. I don't know that you will have the eyes, the spiritual eyes to see him. I don't know if the scales are removed, but I can show, tell you this, that I see him every day of my life. And so faith is a visual assurance. Now, don't take my word for it. Let's, let's, let's go to God's word and, and look at what, let me show you something here. We're going to skip ahead. I mean, this is something we're going to be diving into, but it's so important to, to sort of support what I'm saying here in this passage, that faith is a visual assurance. Let me show you this. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 24. Let me show you something really powerful. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Verse 26, he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of of Egypt. In other words, he, th he was looking ahead at the future, right? And he was saying, Christ is worth living for, the world is not. And so the scriptures say that, that Moses, he considered the, the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasure of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. There's that future assurance. There's that assurance of what is before him. But look at verse 27. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king. Look at these words. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You know what that's telling us here this morning? It is saying that Moses lived his life as though he saw him who he could not see. When Jesus comes into our life and we are given this gift of faith that we may not only believe but see and trust in God, it changes everything. It changes everything. Faith brings a visual assurance so that by faith we are certain of that which we do not see. And just because I can't bring Jesus out on the stage and show him to you physically today, that doesn't mean I don't see him the way I see him. Everything that Jesus has promised that he is and will do, I believe, with a full assurance. With a full assurance. Peter said it like this. He says, though you have not seen him, you love him. I love that. You don't see him, but you love him. Why? Because you see him. You see him working in your life. You see what he's done in your life. You see what the, 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 you have the testimony of life change that God has brought about in your life. You know with a solid conviction, with a solid certainty that he exists. And so Peter says, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. <clears throat> I'm going to ask our band to come on out. Well, they're out. We're going to wrap this thing up. 
In closing, I think another important question that we need to ask is, what does it look like to live by faith? What does it look like to live by faith? Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 10 offers to us an answer to this question. This is what we see when we, when we read the scriptures. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Grace is receiving that which you don't deserve or me receiving that which I don't deserve. We've been saved by God's grace. He extended his grace and mercy onto our life. We've been saved by God and God's grace through faith. This gift this is where it tells us that this is a gift from God, that this isn't something that we had on our own. This is what God wanted to give us, this gift of faith. And this is not of your own doing, talking about this faith that we are saved through. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of work so that no one may boast. What does it look like to live by faith? Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God before, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God saved you for the purpose of bringing glory to him. God saved you for the purpose of bringing glory to him. He saved you and he made you his workmanship. We are like pot, clay in the potter's hand, right? This is what God's doing in our life. We've been saved by grace through faith and he has created us for his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in in them here's another thing that you need to understand about faith 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 is important because it distinguishes between those who belong to him and those who do not it distinguishes between those who belong to him and those who do not the writer of Hebrews said the righteous live by faith the righteous live by faith living by faith is the assurance and the certainty that God loves us and has saved us living by faith is the assurance and the certainty that God is in control living by faith is the assurance and certainty that we are his workmanship created to bring glory to his name my prayer for us this morning is that we would not only be saved through faith that that we would live by faith. My prayer this morning is that with a new year ahead of us that we would learn to trust God in every circumstance that waits for us in our future. Faith is where it begins. Faith is what has saved us. And so my prayer for us this morning is to be people of faith like never before.